Hey everybody, I'm Jamie from C4 Depot. And I'm Kyle. Yeah, and we're here to talk to you about uh, um, OpenGL rendering. It's a really great uh, discovery that, that we made. Kyle and I, we've been working for a client that was very demanding, wanted tons of renders from us. The first time that we started out uh, servicing this client is we sent everything to render farms and it was crazy. We discovered how to use OpenGL. It's gonna save you a pile of time and Kyle's gonna take you into some of the more subtle advanced nuances of using PBR material and then later on uh, ProRender. But in this video, we just wanna talk about the advantages, speed advantages of using OpenGL rendering. Um, Kyle, would you say that uh, OpenGL is about like 90% of what you would get from a full on render or what would you say about that? Yeah, um, as far as uh, quality goes, it's about 90% there. You're, you're missing out on basically uh, more advanced types of reflections and secondary light bounces, um, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Okay, I wanna show you a couple renders that I did. Uh, this is um, a physical render. Took like um, five minutes to do this render. This is... Um, 1280 by 720. Yeah, five minutes. It's like ridiculous. Um, I did a an open GL render and it took 25 seconds. But after it had actually done all these calculations, which I guess it stores someplace, the second time I rendered it, it only took eight seconds. So the open GL rendering, when you're doing an animation, it's almost almost instantaneous. And my machine's really old. I mean, I bought a new one. I haven't don't have it installed yet. This one's 10 years old. So if you're using an old machine, this is definitely gonna save you like a lot of time. So I'm just gonna jump in real quick before Kyle jumps in and shows you how to set up these PBR materials. Assuming that you have an old file and you know, you're just gonna try to render it with OpenGL, a couple settings you wanna do. Um, the first thing is you wanna turn on your filter open this window up. And the rule of thumb is that if you can see something in the viewport, it's gonna render it. So for example, um, like if we selected this phone, you're gonna get access bands. Those things are gonna show up in the render. So if you didn't want those to show up, you wanna turn these off. Um, and anything else that's showing up that has to do with the construction of the scene, turn it off. So just once again, the things that we have here, we have, uh, you know, polygon, subdivision surfaces, the environment, uh, sub uh, subdivision surfaces mesh. Um, yeah, gradient, that's about it. So once you do that, you're gonna wanna go into your options menu, go to configure all, and select the enhanced OpenGL tab. And then here you wanna select OpenGL, Turn on shadows. Uh, you can turn on post effects if you want. Uh, we don't have any post effects, so it doesn't really matter in this scene. Turn transparency on, noises if you have any textures with noises, reflections, and this uh, ambient occlusion, I think it's uh, subdivision or subsurface scattering, I'm, I'm not sure what that is, but you wanna turn that on, really adds a lot of life to it. And then you go to your render settings, Make sure you have op hardware OpenGL selected, highlight hardware OpenGL submenu, and then just like we did over here, check the same things on. Enhanced OpenGL, transparency, shadows, noises, ambient occlusion. And for this one, this is Kyle's secret sauce, super sampling. I think the default is none, add, uh, bump that up to two by two, okay? So that is it. That's all you need to do to start rendering with OpenGL, okay? So I wanna get back to Kyle. Um, that's gonna, well, you can do the math, you know? It's like you're going down from five minutes of frame down to, you know, eight seconds. I don't even know what the, that is. It's, 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 it's phenomenal. So if speed is of the essence and you wanna do uh, previews or you wanna just, send things to the client before you really dial it in and send it to the render farm, this is the way to fly. Okay, so mm -hmm. Kyle. Kyle, can you tell us why would somebody want to use a PBR material if they haven't been using them in the past? Um, well, 
for OpenGL renders, uh, it gives you an extra dimension for uh, diffuse lighting. Uh, in other words, instead of just diffuse lighting from lights uh, in our scene like we have here, uh, this light gives us uh, some diffuse lighting on our sphere. Uh, we're also, with a PBR, we're going to get uh, diffuse lighting on the sphere from the, the HDRI. Okay, so you're so. telling me, I think, from previous conversations, that if you use these PBR materials, it's mm -hmm. like it's going to fake out and give you like a simulated global illumination? Uh, yeah, like global lighting um, directly from the the environment itself, not from any other objects around other objects. But but, but I'm not going to have lighting. to... I'm not going to have to wait like a, a neon and a half for global illumination. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. Just to enlarge the screen and show you exactly how to convert a regular material into a PBR. Uh, just open your material editor here. We made a little texture. It's got a little bit of noise in the color channel. So just go into here and we can do copy shader. Then turn off the color channel. Go into reflectance and we're going to do add. And we can do Lambertian or Orinaire. I'm just going to do Lambertian. And where it says texture under the Lambertian, we're going to do paste shader. So our noise now goes in here. And then we're going to call this color. And then you probably want to put your specular layer on the top of that. And now you've got a PBR material. And that's it. Did you create that by going into create new PBR material? Is that how you did that? Or is that just a regular I didn't, material? But by the way, if you want to create a new material that's a PBR, it will save you some time. So if we were to have done that to, be, to begin with, it would have not created a color channel and instead um, created a diffuse channel here where we would have loaded in um, our image uh, like so. And now it's... Uh, it's like a color channel, right? But it's going to pick up on um, the HDRI in the scene. You can see now we have some lighting over here on this side, right? Right. So, yeah. So we want so it that. Looks to me, do, it ju yeah, just to ahead. interrupt, it looks to me like these materials are actually identical. It's just that when you click on create new PBR material, it's got some things checked on or checked off in, for you in advance. So you don't have to do that, right? Correct. That's true. Yep. Exactly. It's all set up in um, a reflectance channel instead of uh, this one that uses the color. Yeah, so it's like just so. it's basically the same thing. It just the color channels checked off, but instead it gives you a diffuse channel in the reflectance channel. Otherwise, it's yeah. the same. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, and it gives you um, a better um, interaction with the global lighting. Um, as you can see here in this material, zero global lighting here. It's all black. Um, and in this one. Let me just turn off the reflection and uh, let me turn off this. Okay. So zero, zero interaction here, just interaction from this light with um, the diffuse lighting. And um, this setup, our PBR, we have some um, interaction uh, solely because of the HDRI in the background to where in this one, it doesn't pick it up at all. See, here's the PBR using uh, OpenGL, and uh, mm -hmm. here's the, the diffuse. It only picks up on this light here. That's it. It's okay, so things. let me ask you a question. Let's say I've got the PBR material set up. I don't have an HDRI sky in there, but I have a light. Is mm -hmm. that going to give me the same effect or not? Um, the PBR works well with uh, lights and light boxes, so it'll still be beneficial for everything. It's not going to reflect other objects in OpenGL, though. Say, uh, just out of curiosity, if I want to get an HDRI sky, where's a good place to get one? Uh, C4Depot.com. Uh, All right, there you go. Who would have thunk it? All right. Are there uh, any yeah. things that I can't get with um, OpenGL rendering? I mean, can I get volumetric lights or, you know, I mean, what, what, can, what can I not get? Uh, not currently you don't get a uh, with the default OpenGL render you don't get volumetric lighting um you don't get um like global illumination or um you know like secondary light bounces um correct the reflections aren't correct they're very limited uh there's some screen space reflections and the ambient occlusion 
only understands from one projection. I mean, you could bake, um, you know, lighting in to uh, objects like uh, global illumination, shadows, and um, things that are expensive to render for each frame. Um, okay, well, that's great. Thank you for mentioning that because I'm going to make you do it another tutorial. Yeah, we're going to do a tutorial on that. That way, you don't have to, you know, you can just bake it in and use OpenGL. Looks like it was rendered. You know? All right. Yep. Okay, well, thanks, guys. I think we're going to wrap it up. Um, mm -hmm. We want to say thank you for uh, your support, for watching the video. And um, if there's anything else that you're curious about that you want to know, just uh, send us a message and we'll cover that. So thanks a lot, and we'll see you at the depot, okay? All right. Take care. Bye-bye.